Labels are pieces of annotation that extract information from our Civil 3D objects and display that information in a way that you specify by creating a style. Civil 3D is set up so that text styles and sizes can be set up on a global basis and can be overridden as necessary per drawing. Let's look at that a little bit now. We can come to the name of the drawing on the Settings tab in Toolspace and then right click and then select Edit Label Style Defaults. Here on the Label aspect of this we can see that we can set text styles and you can see here that there are child overrides meaning that there are styles below this level that are using some other textile la label visibility and layer that they're placing those labels on. So here we have label, behavior, plan readability, components, and here's where we can set a global text height that can be overridden as well. We can change the way that the leaders are composed and what happens to the label when it's dragged away from the object that it's labeling. We'll talk about all of that in a little bit, but just know that we can set these defaults here at the top of our drawing hierarchy and the labels below it can override those settings. But we can have one universal setting here that can be used by all labels unless they override it themselves. This is called a parent-child relationship, the parent being the drawing levels of settings and the child being the lower levels of settings. The interface for editing label styles is called the Label Style Composer and looks pretty much the same for every label style regardless of the object in Civil 3D. Let's look at one here. I'll go to Alignment, go to Label Styles, I'll go to Station, and Major Station, and we'll look at this one right here, Parallel with Tick. I'll select on it, right click, and I'll hit Edit. Now here you can see the Label Style Composer. Every Label Style in Civil 3D has this Information tab. This is where we name our styles, give them descriptions, and there are indications who created it and who modified it and when it was created and when it was modified. Next up is the General tab. You remember we saw the Label Behavior and Plan Readability bias up here in the Label Settings. Well, this is where we're changing it for this particular label. Here we can see that we're using a textile of Standard the label visibility is true and it's going to this layer in our drawing. We can also set the behavior of our label here by orienting it to an object, to the view that we have, or to a world coordinate system. And we have the plan readability bias, whether it's plan readable or not, and what that readability bias is. This one is set to 110 degrees. Let's look at that for a second. I'll cancel out of here and change to a different drawing that I have. And here is just an illustration of what this plan readability bias is. Here we have text that is readable from the bottom of our drawing or from the right side of our drawing, which is a standard practice. We have text here that is also readable from the bottom. This isn't quite as much, but at what point does this text get flipped? Well, the plan readability bias in our other drawing was set to 110 degrees, and that means once a line or an object reaches this 110 degrees off of this line, then it will be flipped over so that it's readable from the bottom of the drawing. I'll switch back to that drawing and let's continue looking at the Label Style Composer. Go back to Settings, Alignment, Label Styles, Station, Major Station, and this is the one that we were looking at. Okay, Next we go to the Layout tab. On the Layout tab we see we have various components that we can add to our labels. 
This one in particular has station and tick. From this box, we can add different components. For this particular style, we can add text, a line, a block, a tick, and reference text. Reference text means that we'll be able to reference other Civil 3D objects in this particular style. For example, if I select reference text, I could select a surface to reference so that I can extract elevations from the surface. Once one of these is selected, we can control what it is and what will be seen in this box. Right now we're looking at the station and we can see that we have the name for it, its visibility, what it's being anchored to, and some things about the contents. If I come here and select the contents and select the ellipses here, you will see the text component editor. And here are the properties that alignments have that can be extracted and added to our labels. So what I would do is I would come and select some property, let's say a northing. We can change the modifiers of this property. Let's say change the precision of that. And then to add that to the label, we would want to make sure that we select this arrow here. One of the biggest mistakes that people make when creating a label is they don't press this arrow to place the property into the label. When things don't go right with your labels, ask yourself, did I press the arrow? I'm not going to do that and add that to that label now. I'll hit cancel and let's go on. Let's change this component to tick, and you'll see that the properties that are available to me for the ticks are different. And you can see that I would select a block that would be used for this tick. If I were to add a line, then other components would be available to me. Next is the drag state. This is where we tell Civil 3D how to treat this label when it's dragged away from the object that it's labeling. One of the biggest things here is to select either stack text or as composed. And the as composed will leave the label as we composed it earlier on the layout tab. Next is the summary tab. And again, the summary tab is just a summary of the other tabs that we have here. Getting to know how the Label Style Composer works is very important when creating label styles in Civil 3D.